He's here. He's here. Now, broadcasting from, from the underground command post, deep in the bowels of a hidden bunker, somewhere under the brick and steel of a nondescript building, we've once again made contact with our leader, Mark Levin. Mark Levin here, our number, 877-381-3811, 877-381-3811. Don't miss this show. Just as I predicted, Mr. Producer, just as I predicted, boy, did the Eagles suck last night. They just did, you know. We Philadelphia fans... Most of the listeners here are not, but on WPHT and elsewhere. What a lousy, lousy last six or seven games. Unbelievable. I had to shut it off. The, the, the Tampa Bay team looked like, uh, like, like the super-duper team, but the week before the Giants did. I mean, they're running all over the field. Nobody can tackle. Oh, you thought I was talking about Iowa. Donald Trump won in a landslide, a historic landslide. You've heard it all day, and it's true. It's true. But what you're not hearing all day is that Nikki Haley failed utterly and completely. So why am I focusing on this? Haley. Mark, well, you Haley, you don't talk about Vivek, you're not talking about this. Just listen to me. Haley's the great ruling class hope within the Republican Party, Democrat and Republican. They threw everything they had behind Haley. They threw Democrats behind her, independents behind her, massive amounts of money behind her. The free media on all the networks, they were behind Haley. They hate Trump and they hate DeSantis. And she couldn't take second place. And don't be fooled by the spinners on TV now and radio. That was her goal. So she'd go into New Hampshire as the conquering queen of Iowa. Never expected to come in number two. And now there she is in New Hampshire. She said no debates for her unless Trump's involved. So she won't debate DeSantis. And there is uh, Humpty Dumpty. More Dumpty than Humpty. Chris Sununu, liberal Republican. All excited about their primary system up there, which sucks. You can have people who are unaffiliated or independents. Become affiliated that day to vote and then become unaffiliated again. And that's what they're counting on. The same thing as in Iowa. But because it's a direct voting system, not a caucus system, they think they have a real shot. And so even when she loses, she declares victory. She's number three in Iowa. That's what she was expected to wind up, despite all the money, all the effort. She declares declares it's a victory. Now, it's a two-man race. Did you hear her say two-man race? I did. She didn't say two-people race, Mr. Producer. Pretty amazing. Then there's New Hampshire. 
Okay, you know what went on in Iowa about 20 hours ago. Maybe it's 26 hours ago. Whatever the hell it was. 26 hours ago. The voting started and then the voting ended about 22 hours ago. You know the ins and outs. You don't need me to explain it to you. I'm more than happy to. I just did. But I'm not going to keep looping the same thing and filling time and all the rest. I want to focus in on a on an issue here. In 2016, there were a handful, handful of journalists who did an analysis, each independently. One of them is in my book on freedom of the press. I think he was the editor of digital media for one of the main networks. I think it was NBC, actually. But whatever, it doesn't matter. They're all pretty much the same. And he said, how did we miss 2016? Not just Trump's election, but the support that he attracted by millions and millions of Americans, including some who had never voted and some who left the Democrat Party to vote for him. How did that happen? Well, I'll tell you how it happened, because it's happening right now. When you watch MSNBC, it is a cesspool of stupid. These are like the flunkies from fraternity houses and sororities, Mr. Producer. The overwhelming majority of them went to college. I don't think Sharpton did, but that's irrelevant. You get the point. They are arrogant. They look down upon tens of millions of Americans, 65% of whom did not complete a four-year college degree, most of whom never went to college. They have nothing but contempt for you. And when there are college graduates or even intellectuals and scholars who speak up for the country, for Americanism and patriotism, which is not taught in colleges and universities, the opposite is taught, to hate your own country. They try to destroy them. We cannot talk about this enough. The media today are doing things that the media even 50 years ago would never have dreamt of doing. Certainly 100 years ago. Oh, we had yellow journalism. We had it even before we had a country. I'm not talking about yellow journalism. I'm talking about totalitarian journalism. That is, in the United States of America, we have a media class. Let me repeat that. We have a media class that has a great deal in common with state-run media in Iran, in China, in Russia, and all the other genocidal regimes. They are there to promote and defend a ubiquitous central government. They are there to promote and defend the political party under which these various Marxist movements operate. They're there to promote and defend lies and propaganda and pseudo-events, censorship, censorship by affirmative stories and by omission. They're intellectually dishonest. They know they're not impartial. They know they're not objective, and they know they don't seek to be either. They are self-righteous psychologically. They're ideological activists. And there's groupthink. When 3, 4, 5% of Republicans are vote Republican, it doesn't get any more lopsided than that, America. But they have contempt for you. Just to say contempt for Goldwater and Nixon, Reagan, and Trump. They have contempt for you. And they are. They are using the totalitarian tools when it comes to indoctrination and when it comes to destroying those things 
that they either oppose or individuals that stand up to them. They've embraced the full use of propaganda. The full use of character assassination. The full use of intimidation and race baiting. They object to free speech. They object to academic freedom. They claim they don't, but I'm telling you who they are and what they do. We have today the fusion of the ruling class and the media in our country. And of course, they will choose the Democrat Party over the Republican Party, even if the Republican Party is led by your typical Republican establishment ruling class member. That's why they backed Obama against McCain, who was a perfect ruling class Republican. That's why they backed Obama against Romney, perfect ruling class Republican. Establishmentarians, rhinos. But in the meantime, they will use these people to advance the totalitarian mindset. You see it on MSNBC, you see it on CNN, the pages of the New York Times and the Washington Post. It's all around you. You can't miss it. They supported two impeachments against Donald Trump, even though both of them were outrageous. They supported Russia collusion and all the lies of which they were part. They were celebrating them. They were promoting them. They supported the criminal investigation based on a complete fiction, a concoction of the Hillary Clinton campaign, the Democrat Party, and the Obama administration. And they are whole hog in support of the criminal investigations and prosecutions of Donald Trump, which they know are interfering with the election, which they know are being run by Democrat DA prosecutors, a Democrat attorney general in New York, and a Democrat attorney general and Department of Justice filled with radical Marxists, which is why Jack Smith was chosen, because of the abuse that he unleashed against a former Republican governor, McDonald of Virginia. So you see how they are analyzing this election in Iowa. We have individuals with prime time shows on news platforms in the United States of America attacking the race of the voters in Iowa, attacking the faith of the voters in Iowa. Accusing them of being racists. We have censorship like we've never seen before. When MSNBC would not even cover Donald Trump's speech. Instead we have to listen to Rachel Madcow. It was a bloviating buffoon and wrong on everything. We have the most sanct- sanctimonious, always constipated looking Jake Tapper. Long time, lifelong Democrat activist, as almost all of them are, covering the campaign in Iowa. And they go to Donald Trump for a speech, and when he's about to mention immigration, he cuts him off. And we'll talk more about this as the course goes on. We have the audio. Cuts him off. You never see this with Biden. You never saw it with Obama. Biden can say whatever he wants. He can scream at the top of his lungs. They use Hitler and Mussolini. Stalin. I'm talking about news organizations. And their repetition and the big lie. They refer to the Third Reich. And yet they conduct themselves like the media for the Third Reich. You want to know what autocracies look like? You're looking at one. 
as I said, the fusion between the so-called media and the Democrat Party is beyond debate. It's unequivocal. No matter how you analyze it, no matter looking at the data, it doesn't matter. And now they're interfering with the Republican primary process to promote Nikki Haley. Nikki Haley gets almost all positive media. If she were to actually be a nominee, they would set her up and knock her down. But almost all positive media, free media. And they hate Donald Trump. But they think the easiest way for Nikki Haley for it is for DeSantis to commit to getting out of the race. Nikki Haley, as the one-on-one candidate, they don't even suggest that Nikki Haley get out of the race. And yet, unless somebody can explain how, look at the support that Donald Trump is getting. It's enormous, and it is in all factions of the Republican Party. I've got more to say about this. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. One of the reasons Nikki Haley will not soon leave the race is because she's open to being vice president to Donald Trump. DeSantis said no. Nikki Haley said yes. You know, DeSantis has a job as governor, too. Nikki Haley has no job but sitting on boards. And she was demanding $100,000 a speech, even from charitable organizations. A lot of people don't know that, but it's true. You know how much I demand from charitable organizations, Mr. Producer? Nothing. Just the flight and a hotel room. That's it. But I want to talk about Joy Reid and the Democrat Party and what they say about white evangelical Christians. Because as a Jew, I've had enough of it. And let me speak to this. I'll be right back. Mark Levin, America's tyranny hunter. Call in now, 877-381-3811. For the last several months, we've witnessed in the media, in academia, in the Democrat Party, and the White House, rabid anti-Semitism. It's everywhere. People are completely out of the closet. And they feel free to say things that are just horrendous. Last night, we heard rabid anti-Christianity. White evangelical Christians, it was their turn. Iowa doesn't look like America. Too many white evangelical Christians. I don't even know what that means. Is an Iowa part of America? Just too many whites and Christians, you see. That wouldn't be said about any other race or pigmentation ever. And so the vote, what they're trying to say in Iowa, is illegitimate. It's not legitimate. It's not America. Diversity, they say. We need diversity. But they don't believe in diversity. We have black conservatives, brown conservatives, women conservatives, Asian conservatives, Jewish conservatives, gay conservatives. On and on and on. They have nothing but contempt for them. They despise them because they go against the narrative. The narrative. But they don't support diversity. 
If you have an idea that's different than theirs, they want to shut you down and shut you up. They want to intimidate you and threaten you. So you might say they only support diversity when it comes to physical characteristics or belief systems. But the truth is they don't support that either. The segregationists are back. The Democrat Party racist segregationists are back. Just new Democrat racist segregationists who focus on different races than the Democrat Party did 100 years ago. Now, a lot of these people who talk this way are first, second, third generation Americans. Not all. And by the way, almost all of them are college graduates. Almost all of them are in the media. College professors, law school professors. You don't hear this kind of talk among working class, blue collar Americans. You just don't. White privilege, you see. Iowa's white privilege. Iowa is really not to be considered a serious state, and the outcome is not to be considered serious. After all, Nikki didn't win. But look at this. They voted mostly for Trump. And honestly, if you add Trump with DeSantis, nearly three-fourths of the voters in Iowa went conservative. Notice nobody talks about that. Nearly three-fourths of the voters went conservative, even though Haley and the Democrat Party pushed Democrats and independents to vote as Republicans yesterday. But three-fourths of the voters, which means even a bigger percentage of Republicans, perhaps upwards of over 80%, voted conservative. So we have to hate Iowa now. Iowa. Places like Kansas and Nebraska, they feed us. But we have to hate them. Because they don't meet the diversity requirement that Joy Reid, I think she's second generation, insists. Joy Reid, who a little over a decade ago lied about her social posts, said somebody obviously posted those for her. She's a liar and a racist, and a bigot, and an anti-Semite. Feel free to sue me. We'll get to the bottom of everything. I don't cower from this stuff. It doesn't cost me anything. I'll represent myself. Now that said, I want you again, as I say, to look at Arlington National Cemetery. If you've never visited it and you're in the Washington area, visit it. Acre after acre. Hill after hill. Oh, there's some crosses. There's some uh, uh, headstones of other religions. No question. Great heroes. The vast majority are crosses. That is the vast majority of people dead in that cemetery. And that's just one military cemetery, just one national cemetery. We have them all over the country, all over the world. Are white. Are Christian. Why don't some of these reprobates go to Arlington, then ask these poor souls if they feel like they've experienced white privilege. Ask these poor souls fighting to save our country, fighting in our civil war, ask them if they fought for a white dominant society. Ask them. The men who founded this nation, not all, but the overwhelming majority, were white Christians. It's not a perfect country. When this country was founded, 
when this country was founded, slavery was rampant on the continent of Africa. Black tribes enslaving black tribes. Slavery was rampant in the Middle East. Arab enslaving Arab. Slavery was rampant in Southeast Asia. Slavery was rampant in Central and South America. Slavery was rampant everywhere on the planet. Everywhere. And it still exists in the Middle East. It still exists in Africa. It still exists in Southeast Asia. And it still exists on our southern border. On our southern border. But we're to destroy our own country. Not because the people who seek to destroy it are opposed to slavery. Officially, slavery was ended with the Civil War. Segregation was ended. Slavery started again on our southern border thanks to Biden. Segregation has started again in our institutions thanks to the Democrat Party and CRT and the like. It's because they hate what's great about America. Critical race theory is not taught because there's slavery in America. Critical race theory is taught to destroy a free America. In America that addressed at massive cost its own imperfections. This Marxist movement has nothing to do with slavery. It has everything to do with destroying freedom. Your lifestyle. Representative government. The Constitution. Wherever Marxism in one form or another is imposed and practiced, you have tyranny, you have genocide, you have political prisons. These people aren't fighting about slavery. They're not fighting about American history. They're trying to destroy America today. As it exists. Marxism didn't succeed in China Because of what occurred in America. Marxism wasn't imposed in Cuba because what happened in America. Marxism wasn't imposed in North Korea because what happened happened in America. And on and on and on. These genocidal regimes, and not just Marxists, have nothing to do with America. Or the men who founded this country. And it is because of what those men did. It is because of the Declaration of Independence. It is because of the Constitution that even now the Democrats and their Marxists wave around in order to protect themselves while they burn it at the same time. It is because of George Washington and George Mason and James Madison. It is because of these great men It is because of Thomas Jefferson and the Declaration. It is because of Hamilton. It's because of all of these great white Christian men. That we have the freest, most humane, most equal, most prosperous country on the face of the earth. It's because of them that minorities today, today, are flocking into America. Particularly people from Central and South America, particularly people from the continent of Africa, particularly people from the Middle East and Southeast Asia. By the millions are coming into a country that was established by white Christians for the most part, embracing the Judeo-Christian belief system and creating a country like this. I want to thank the Iowa 
folks, the people in Iowa. Not because of their race, but because of their patriotism. I want to thank the people all over this country. Not because of their race, because of their patriotism. It is a grotesque miscarriage of the soul of this country. Mischaracterization. That these media buffoons, racists, anti-Semites, Democrats, that they project onto this country. And I believe it was Donald Trump who said last night, and I think DeSantis has said it as well, God knows I say it all the time. If we had a media in this country that at least attempted to pursue objectivity and partiality, look, they're impossible to achieve, but it's the process of attempting to do it. This country would not be at Civil War edge. This country would be far more harmonious. This country would be a happier place, a more spiritual place, But here we are. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. Joy Reid hasn't done a damn thing for black people. Not a damn thing. Neither has Sonny Huston. Neither have all the white liberals and radicals. Not a damn thing. Their party supports, or did, slavery and segregation and eugenics. Voter suppression. Not the Republicans. When I speak the way I speak, as I just did... I'm talking about the right of all people in this country as human beings to be treated with respect, not to have these lectures from these Marxist propagandists who are seated throughout our culture. And I reject civil rights Marxism. I embrace civil rights. But this stuff that's going on and on and on now about white Christians, evangelical Christians, and by the way, again, out of the closet, now Jews and Zionists, and this is what the Democrat Party is, chapter two, chapter three. The Democrat Party hates America. Anti-black racism and anti-Semitism, chapter two. Anti-white racism and anti-Semitism, chapter three. It is a diabolical operation, and they intend to keep pushing this through the course of the election. And Nikki Haley's fine with it because they were saying this, Reed was, in the context of her skin color. She has brown skin. Oh, that's why she lost. And why did Republicans support Clarence Thomas and why do the Democrats constantly try to destroy his reputation and libel him? Oh, I see. Wait a minute, he's black. You get the point. This is full-throated racism bigotry, anti-Semitism. We see it on CNN. We see it on MSNBC. We see it in the pages of the New York Times and the Washington Post. We see it in our universities and colleges. We see it on the streets. We see it when you go to the doctor or when you visit a lawyer or when you're getting whatever part of life, whatever, wherever you're going, it's now all out of the closet. It's all perfectly fine to be an anti-Semite or a racist to attack Christians. Like Christians are being murdered now in the Congo and Nigeria. Black Christians being murdered and raped by black Muslims. Yeah, I said it. It's true. It's okay, right? You never hear squat about it. I've been listening to, in part, to some degree, and watching the coverage of what happened in Iowa. We've hit that. 
But there's a lot more to this than the superficial, the surface level, which is why the interference attempt on the criminal prosecution side must be addressed in this context, which is why the racism and the so-called dictatorship threats must be addressed in the context of this election. They're happening for a reason. They are part of the election effort for Biden to win. This segment of the podcast is exclusively sponsored by Pure Talk. Pure Talk offers great coverage and can save your family money on your wireless bill every single month. Go to puretalk.com to find the plan that's right for you. Thank you again for listening, and thank you so much for this sponsorship, Pure Talk. He's here. He's here. Now, broadcasting from from the underground command post, deep in the bowels of a hidden bunker, somewhere under the brick and steel of a nondescript building, we've once again made contact with our leader, Mark Levin. Hello, America. Mark Levin here. Our number, 877-381-3811, 877-381-3811. I want to tell you a little story that broke before the program came on the air. You may not think it's very relevant. I think it's totally relevant. It's the way I look at things. Pakistan's ex-Prime Minister, Imran Khan, indicted on charge of violating marriage law, Mr. Producer. Associated depressed. Islamabad, a Pakistani court today, indicted, imprisoned former Prime Minister Imran Khan and his wife on a charge that their 2018 marriage violated the legal requirement that a woman wait three months before remarrying, his lawyer said. Khan denied the charge, and his lawyer, Intisar Panjuta, called the case one of scores against the former prime minister that he sees as a politically motivated attempt to keep Khan out of Pakistan's general elections to be held next month. Now, is this not illustrative of what's going on in our country? This is Pakistan. This is the third world. This is the third world. Khan's wife, Bushra Bibi, who's a spiritual healer, was previously married to a man named Khan Warmanika, who has claimed that they divorced in November 2017, less than three months ahead of Khan's January 1, 2018 marriage, which was announced the February of that year. But Bibi has said the divorce was in August of 2017. Khan, who previously was married to socialite Jamima Goldsmith and journalist Rahim Khan, and his current wife have both denied that they violated the three-month waiting period, and it goes on. Why don't they charge them with the Ku Klux Klan Act, Mr. Producer? Or maybe the mishandling of documents. Or maybe the Enron obstruction statute. Or maybe federal contractor violation. No, they found their own law over there, as they have scores of them. This is the marriage law. To keep this guy from running against the current president of Pakistan. Now, none of you have heard about this today. None of this is being reported on cable or network TV. None of this is being reported on radio. And yet it's a perfect uh, illustration of horrific third world interference with campaigns and the destruction of democracy. I'll use their word, democracy. And yet, it's being done in our country even worse. Now, this is why immunity for a president after he leaves the White House is so critical. Because this is exactly what's going to happen right here. And it already has in Washington in the January 6th case. Those statutes are phony statutes. On January 6th, the Democrat Party and the media hyped up that that was an insurrection. It's not an insurrection. Not even close to an insurrection. Not even close to a violent riot. There were no guns that were fired. 
don't get me wrong, I don't defend the, the, the individuals in there who were violent as individuals. But it wasn't a violent riot like the riots we saw in 2020. And I make no excuse for what people who actually hit police or hurt police or broke things, no excuse for them. I'm talking about the hundreds and hundreds and thousands of others that didn't do anything wrong. Certainly not requiring this kind of treatment by the Biden administration. So I'm clear on that regardless of what anybody tries to spin. But this is an example of what can happen. And what has happened with Donald Trump. You look at this and you say, this is unbelievable. Okay, the issue there is marriage. That's just an excuse. As they say, they're going to they're gonna bring multiple indictments on different cases. It's to keep this guy. And this guy's already in prison. The former prime minister of Pakistan is in prison. Because he's the former prime minister. So he's been indicted. That is charged. Convicted, I'm sure it was a perfectly legitimate trial, and imprisoned. And now they're piling on with more charges. That is exactly what they want to do to Donald Trump. I hope this puts things into perspective. That's even worse than that. It's even worse than that. I've been meaning to get to this story, but now's a good time. Talking about the election and elections and New Hampshire's next week. And look, let me be perfectly honest with you. There are shows, whether they're on radio or TV or network or whatever the hell they are, that just keep hyping, 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 hyping. Keep pushing polls, 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 polls. Haven't we been burned by enough polls? They bring in legal, uh, excuse me, uh, political analysts. Many of them the same faces. Many of them the same faces. And I guess this is supposed to be compelling. But here we have a piece in Red State from two days ago, as I say, meant to get to it. What was that about a deep state? Check out these plans to deal with Trump if he wins. Joe Biden and the Democrats truly take the cake, writes Nick Arama. Biden is down in the polls to Trump. He's the leading GOP candidate. So they're doing all they can to play up the threat to democracy, quote unquote, from Trump. And now I have no doubt whoever was leading would immediately become Hitler to them. You better believe it, except for except for Haley. Except for Haley. She'd be Mother Teresa. Because that's how they do things. That's their only play, given Biden has such a horrible record. He has no real accomplishment on which to run. Yes, he does. If you're pro-Hamas and anti-Semites, if you're pro-China, and so forth and so on, that's his record. Couldn't do an NBC report. The powers that be are already trying to work to put Trump in check. You know, the party that supports democracy. People talk about the deep state. Check out what they're saying here. They're worried if Trump may win, so the unelected people... Want to thwart how the elected representative people might exercise this part. Let me, let me take this a step further before I quote this. This is the Democrat Party in this election and every election now going forward. To destroy the voting system, the integrity of the vote. To take down all the barriers that prevent fraud. Illegal immigration, obviously the illegal immigrants, more and more of them are going to be able to vote in local elections and state elections will make it impossible to police them at the federal level. But even more, they will have children who will automatically become American citizens. All these people coming across the border, as soon as they have a child, they're treated as American citizens, the children, and they will be future voters. So this is what the Democrat Party is doing. Purposely, they don't care about the country. They care about their party. If you read the Democrat Party Hates America, you understand this. It's about their party, like in communist countries. It's about the party. Like in the Third Reich, it's about the party. It's not about the country. It's not about the people. It's the party, the power of the party. The power of the ruling class. The power of the elites. So NBC read, it writes as follows. Now bracing for Trump's potential return. 
A loose-knit network of public interest groups. A public interest group is a tax-exempt group. So already they're violating our tax code. Nobody's going to touch them. When is the last time a radical left-wing Democrat or even liberal nonprofit organization that represents to the government, to the Internal Revenue Service, under penalty of perjury, that they are a non-political organization? You can be an advocacy organization. I got it. None that I can remember. I do remember them going after hundreds and hundreds of Tea Party groups under a false pretense, but let's go on. Now bracing for Trump's potential return, a loose-knit network of public interest groups and lawmakers is quietly devising plans to try to foil any efforts to expand presidential power, which could include pressuring the military to cater to his political needs. Trump's, look at this sickness. Those taking part in the effort told NBC News they are studying Trump's past actions and 2024 policy positions. So they'll be ready if he wins in November. That involves preparing to take legal action and send letters to Trump appointees, spelling out consequences, in other words, threatening them. If they're going to undermine constitutional norms. Now, two points. This is the party that hates the Constitution, I thought, because of the white supremacists and slaveholders who wrote it. That's number one. And number two, they're worried about constitutional norms. Is that why they tried to pack the Supreme Court? Is that why they're attacking the conservatives on the court, led by Clarence Thomas? Undermining the independence of the court? Is that why we've opened borders in violation of our immigration laws? Constitutional norms? Is that why Joe Biden has violated two Supreme Court rulings that basically told him to F off? Is that why? We're already starting to put together a team to think through the most damaging types of things that Trump might do so that we're ready to bring lawsuits if we have to, says, <coughs> excuse me, Miriam McCord, executive director of the Institution for Constitutional Advocacy and Protection at Georgetown Law. You know, it's like all these communist regimes. They use the word reform or the People's Republic and all the rest. They're the opposite. They're thugs and tyrants. The post on X, Twitter, I can't stop calling it Twitter, about the story has more than 2 million views, far more than a normal NBC post, because many were concerned about what the article was revealing. The post said exactly what I just read to you. The president is the commander-in-chief. If unelected people start trying to dictate or interfere in that power, you may have a problem, America. You may have a problem. Brad Cates, political consultant and pundit, says, say these same public interest groups, quote unquote, private individuals, NGOs, lawmakers, wouldn't happen to be many of the same people who were lauded and applauded in the glowing Time magazine piece back in 2021 for successfully managing a shadow campaign to fortify the 2020. uh, Hold on one second here. The 2020 election against Donald Trump, would they? Of course they are. But it's good of Brad to remember that. And same with others. A network of these groups. And so it's, their concern is Trump or a conservative gets elected. And he's going to put an end to this kind of abuse. By these phony charities. They're going to put an end to it. And so then they point, oh, look at this, they're against democracy. You have no idea. Honestly, you, you understand maybe from a distance or a general perspective the extent to which there are people in just a couple mile area in and around Washington, D.C. that hold so much power over you, that are so entrenched both in and out of the government. You've got the leeches and the parasites who hang on to the government after they've been in government, or they go into government after they've been out of government. You see it in the media. It's a completely different world. Completely different world. It's all about control and power and special interest. We've come so far, and I mean away from, the way this republic was supposed to be. With the decentralization of power. It's, all, it's centralized power. And it's only getting worse and it's only going to get worse. The same people go on about, oh, democracy. 
We're going to have Hitler. We're going to have a dictatorship. Well, they would know. They would know. Tell me, name, name more than a handful of Democrats in the House of Representatives who were appalled by the anti-Semitism that took place in the streets. Putting aside the Jewish members. But you can't even do that. Look at Bernie Sanders in the Senate. It's all for it. It's a thug and a phony. But put that aside. You had far more who were okay with it. There were two resolutions put forward by Republicans in the House. Half the Democrats voted against them. They don't want any changes at our universities and colleges. None. The Biden administration won't even investigate how many people are here on visas, including student visas, who ought to be thrown the hell out of the country. They're not going to deport them. They won't deport criminals. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. Does social engineering from leftist corporations make you feel like we're living in the twilight zone? Well, you're not alone. Pure Talk, my wireless company, knows the silent majority is fed up. And I urge all those Americans to stand with a company that champions your values. Those of you who always have your neighbors back, who pulled yourselves up by your bootstraps, who realize that a little bit of elbow grease can fix just about anything. Well, it's time to join your fellow patriots who fled their old wireless company for something better. Pure Talk. Pure Talk gives you phenomenal coverage on America's most dependable 5G network for half the price of the other guys. And with unlimited plans starting at just $20 a month, the average family saves almost $1,000 a year. And it's a veteran-owned company. Pure Talk is a company you can feel proud to do business with. Just go to puretalk.com slash Levin to join your fellow Americans and make the switch. That's puretalk.com slash Levin and save an additional 50% off your first month with Pure Talk. Here's Rachel Madcow last night on why they censored Donald Trump's victory speech last night. Go. At this point in the evening, the projected winner of the Iowa caucuses um, has just started giving his victory speech. Uh, we will keep an eye on that as it happens. Uh, we will let you know if there's any news made in that speech, if there's anything noteworthy, something substantive and important. Why does there have to be anything newsworthy in his speech? What does that have to do with anything? It's newsworthy, one. He wants to talk to the American people, and anybody who watches your network doesn't hear what he says. Instead, they hear what you say about what he says. Now, this is typical fascistic, Marxist, autocratic propaganda. We will decide what goes on the airwaves. Go ahead. Saying this is... Of course, there is a reason that we and other news organizations have generally stopped giving an unfiltered live platform. Yes, there is. There is, because you're fascists and Marxists. You're in the back pocket of Joe Biden and the Democrat Party. It's outrageous. This is precisely, precisely what happens in communist regimes, fascistic regimes, Precisely, they like to use Hitler's name. This, this is what the Third Reich did. This is what Stalin did. They like to use those names. Let's use them. They're controlling communication. They don't want you to hear what the leading Republican candidate has to say. They're going to decide if it's newsworthy. Out of the mouths of Marxists, right there. Now, Jake Tapper is no different. He's a grotesque fraud. Here he is on CNN. Cut eight, go. We're going to seal up the border. Because right now we have an invasion. We have an invasion of millions and millions of people that are coming into our country. I can't imagine why they think that's a good thing. Donald Trump declaring victory with a historically strong showing in the Iowa caucuses if these numbers hold. The biggest victory for a non-incumbent president in the modern era for this contest. A relatively subdued speech as these things go so far, although here he is right now under under my voice. You hear him repeating his anti-immigrant rhetoric. There you Uh, go. His anti-immigrant rhetoric. So if you want to secure the border and prevent fentanyl from coming over, sex trafficking taking place, all these things from going on, you're anti-immigrant now. 
No, you're anti-immigrant, you clown, with the sex trafficking, with the raping, with the brutality that's taking place. You're not pro-immigrant. But besides, this fascistic Marxist tactic, they don't want you to hear what he has to say about immigration. So he cuts him off. He cuts him off. Joe Biden can burp his way through anything when he, when he deigns to appear and speak. This is the problem. Does social engineering from leftist corporations make you feel like we're living in the twilight zone? Well, you're not alone. Pure Talk, my wireless company, knows the silent majority is fed up. And I urge all those Americans to stand with a company that champions your values. Those of you who always have your neighbors back, who pulled yourselves up by your bootstraps, who realize that a little bit of elbow grease can fix just about anything. Well, it's time to join your fellow patriots who fled their old wireless company for something better. Pure Talk. Pure Talk gives you phenomenal coverage on America's most dependable 5G network for half the price of the other guys. And with unlimited plans starting at just $20 a month, the average family saves almost $1,000 a year. And it's a veteran-owned company. Pure Talk is a company you can feel proud to do business with. Just go to puretalk.com slash Levin to join your fellow Americans and make the switch. That's puretalk.com slash Levin and save an additional 50% off your first month with Pure Talk. Conservative and proud of it. Call the Mark Levin Show at 877-381-3811. The uh, editorial board of the Wall Street Journal or the New York Times... I thought it was the Wall Street Journal. It's both of them, Mr. Producer. Urging, uh... Repub- oh, this one is the New York Times editorial board. Breitbart has it. Begs Republicans to abandon Trump. Calls him a unique danger. And then we have the Wall Street Journal. Urging Republicans to abandon DeSantis. So Nikki Haley has a shot. The Wall Street Journal editorial page is really interesting in some ways and predictable. Just when you think they're promoting free market capitalism, just when you think they're promoting secure borders, which they never did in their history, just when you think they're starting to turn around, well, there they are, the usual, under Paul Gigo. They're in Mitch McConnell's back pocket, pretty much. And the Wall Street Journal editorial page is, in my view, directly rooting for Nikki Haley. Why? What does Nikki stand for that's so important? Well, she can win based on what? Well, she's 10 points ahead. That poll is a week old. And wait until people understand that she stands for literally nothing and everything at the same time. So we're supposed to rally around Nikki Haley. Nikki Haley doesn't rally around Nikki Haley. One day Nikki Haley is not Nikki Haley, and then another day she is. So rally around, they all reject conservatism, whether it's sort of a common sense conservatism of Trump or more of a philosophical conservatism of Ron DeSantis. And they really reject it, which is why they promote Peggy Noonan, who is promoting Chris Christie. These people are so completely out of touch. There is out of touch with the American people outside of New York and outside of L.A. and outside of Washington, the rest of the country, and even those parts of the country, as the Democrats. As the Democrats. The GOP establishment ruling class media. Whether it's my dear friends at National Review, my dear friend Rich Lowry, whether it is... Our friends at the Wall Street Journal editorial board, and by the way, those people were trashing the Tea Party. Any movement that's intended, even in little steps, to try and get us back on the path to fiscal sanity, securing the border, reducing the size of government, and of course the pushback's going to be heavy, it's going to be ugly, it's going to be constant and relentless. They want nothing to do with it. Oh, they give some of it, some voice, but then when push comes to shove, it's Nikki Haley. Now, I want to say something that is not intended to be mean, but it is what it is, and I call it as I see it. In many ways, Nikki Hale reminds me of, and I posted this, Mr. Producer, Kamala Harris. 
She was all over Fox today, all over everywhere, and I'm listening to her, and more word salad you never heard from a Republican before. Except this guy, Sununu, who always seems like he's high on sugar or something's going on there. But nonetheless, maybe he just talks fast, because he doesn't want you to really focus on what he says. That could be it. But I listen to Nikki Hill, and she's going on, and she's on, she's on with kill meat, and, blah, 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 and she's done, I said, what the hell did she just say? Other than, it's now a two-man race. Excuse me, I thought you were proper. A man can't be a woman. man can be a woman. So it's a two-person race, right? Isn't that the new language? But it's not. And I was listening to her rationale, just like we were listening to the response, which was preposterous and incoherent on whether a man could be a woman. Word salad. That's what we get from Nikki Haley now. Word salad. So in that respect, she reminds me of Kamala Harris. Then there's another aspect that reminds me of Kamala Harris. And this is the one where I don't mean to come across in a brutal way, but I'm just going to tell you what I'm thinking. I'll try and say it as nicely as I can. You're asked about the Civil War, and you don't know how to answer that question, what the Civil War was fought over, and then you need your spin doctors to come in after the fact. You refuse to say that a man cannot be a woman. It's biologically impossible. Smarts. Let me try and put it kindly. She's definitely not the smartest of, those, of the three candidates remaining. You agree with me, Mr. Producer? 100%. The word salads, the inability to really answer direct questions. Um, there's some politics in that, obviously, as it is with Kamala Harris. But it's, it doesn't come across as too smart to me. Now, I understand this is not what somebody like me is supposed to say. Wait a minute, what are you trying to say? I'm not trying to say anything. I said it. And I mean it. So her word salads and then basic questions about the Civil War and can a man be a woman. It just. It's very worrisome to me, very worrisome. This is what happens when you're not. When you when you're when you're unmoored. When you're more interested in the race, the political race, and you're more interested in winning and you're more interested in building coalitions than having a principle, win or lose, and building the right coalitions. That's the difference. And I don't want to hear that she's 10 points ahead and she can win. Oh, okay. Thank you, Washington. Thank you, think tankers. Thank you, political analysts who are wrong, wrong, wrong all the time. Look at the polls, they tell us. No, I'd rather not, actually, because they're always wrong. They support her because she's one of them and they're her she represents their kind of politics they don't want to clean up the republican party i'm not saying about purity they just don't want to clean up their act they prefer to whine about the budget whine about the border say biden's really going to get smacked and then when you ask them well what is the answer to this we have people uh, you know nikki haley is not and has never been a strong support of securing that border. She's never been a strong proponent of taking on communist China. And I don't mean with war and that sort of thing. I mean just economically. In fact, she gave them land for free. She doesn't want to get involved in these culture wars. But these culture wars are what's killing us. The brainwashing of our children, what's going on about men and women and all the rest. So when DeSantis takes on Disney, she takes the side of Disney. And now her line is, we don't need any more chaos. And she means with Trump, we have all this chaos because they've taken polls and people are saying, we want normalcy. We can't handle this anymore. Trump isn't causing chaos. Our enemies are causing chaos with Trump. They're the ones indicting him. They're the ones filing endless motions. They're the ones getting these outrageous decisions with a lot of political rhetoric from these Democrat judges. Trump's not doing that. He's the one getting sued civilly constantly. He's not creating the chaos 
And by the way, you want to see chaos, Nikki? Go to the southern border and stay there for a week. That's chaos. And so we get these uh, these bumper stickers. You know, I don't want chaos. Too many 80-year-olds in Washington, D.C. Well, let me put it to you this way. Maybe there are, maybe there aren't. But there's a 35-year-old who's a Marxist-Leninist who's trying to push our country in the wrong direction. Then there's at least one too many 35-year-olds in Washington, D.C., if you get my point. All this talk, all the time, about the superficial and not what's between somebody's ears, is so frustrating. So frustrating. Churchill was prime minister at a relatively old age until they threw him out and then they re-elected him. Ronald Reagan was president at a relatively old age. As he left office, there was deterioration. But he's our, one of our greatest presidents. Ataturk in Turkey. Not that piece of you-know-what who's there now, Aragon. The genocidal terrorist. He was fairly old when he, dis- when he left office. The problem is Joe Biden is old, old. The problem is Joe Biden is none of those people. The problem is when they say Joe Biden is living history and experience. His history and experience are loathsome. Loathsome. Even when he had a mind, they were loathsome. So all 80-year-olds aren't alike. All black people aren't alike. All white people aren't alike. All Jews aren't alike. All this. Joe Biden is 81 or 82 going on 112. And that's apart from his disastrous policies. But Nikki Haley's in the group thing, so it doesn't matter. If you're 80 or older, there's too many of you. In her speech, which I didn't think was too magnanimous, I heard a a liberal friend of ours on Fox going on about DeSantis. He didn't even thank his... People in sort and I like Harold Ford. I think he's a really good guy. I'd like to meet him one day. But he's wrong. The worst speech was Nikki Haley. Now to a two-man race. You think we're stupid? We know she's going to do well in New Hampshire. We know the fix is in. We know the fix is in in New Hampshire. And we know why she's going to do well. Democrats. Democrat money. Liberal Republicans. A clownish governor. We got it. We know. And that's the juggernaut where she's going to win a state like Pennsylvania or Alabama or Montana? No, it's not. You can't win the Republican nomination hoping that you'll have enough open primaries that you're going to get Democrats and Democrat billionaires to fund your super PAC. That's why she will have no mandate. That's why she has... All right, let me put it to you this way. You people who voted for it, give me... Five substantive things she's done. She's been in politics a long time. Five. That's all five. Should be able to give me 50. Just five. I don't know of five. Do you, America? And I've looked. And I've looked. So the New York Times begs Republicans, as they write at Breitbart, to abandon 2024 frontrunner Trump for Nikki Haley. And the Wall Street Journal begs DeSantis to get out. So we have a one-on-one race. Now, they want him out because of Nikki Haley. Look, there's a lot of reasons for people to get out and get in. What I'm saying is what these two editorial pages are doing is so obvious. Both of them despise Trump. The New York Slimes and the Wall Street Journal. That's why they wrote the editorials that they wrote. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. Does social engineering from leftist corporations make you feel like we're living in the twilight zone? Well, you're not alone. Pure Talk, my wireless company, knows the silent majority is fed up. And I urge all those Americans to stand with a company that champions your values. Those of you who always have your neighbors back, who pulled yourselves up by your bootstraps, who realize that a little bit of elbow grease can fix just about anything. Well, it's time to join your fellow patriots who fled their old wireless company for something better. Pure Talk. Pure Talk gives you phenomenal coverage on America's most dependable 5G network. 
for half the price of the other guys. And with unlimited plans starting at just $20 a month, the average family saves almost $1,000 a year. And it's a veteran-owned company. Pure Talk is a company you can feel proud to do business with. Just go to puretalk.com slash Levin to join your fellow Americans and make the switch. That's puretalk.com slash Levin and save an additional 50% off your first month with Pure Talk. Let's see. I have an email to me. This person writes, I reject what Joy Reid says. She's a female. She says, I reject what Joy Reid says about the United States of America. The land of equality and opportunity where anyone can succeed with hard work. Nikki Haley spoke like a Democrat in Iowa, hitting every cliche and oppressed ism. Brown girl, small town woman, first female minority governor that she faced racism. That's from my wife. Julie, a Jewish female woman. And I think we're all sick and tired of it. Playing into the left, the Marxists, the media. If that's what you want to do, in my view, you're in the wrong damn party. This is a fantastic country where Nikki Haley was able to become governor and is running for president of the United States. Where she's become a millionaire sitting on corporate boards and getting $100,000 a speech. She's not a victim. Not because of her genitalia, not because of her race, not because of anything. She should be running as a success story. That's for my wife. She's right. I'll be right back. He's here. He's here. Now, broadcasting from the underground command post... Deep in the bowels of a hidden bunker, somewhere under the brick and steel of a nondescript building, we've once again made contact with our leader, Mark Levin. Hello, America. Mark Levin here. Our number, 877-381-3811, Hour 3 is always very, very important. Now, I don't typically read govexec.com, govexec.com. I mean, I, I read a lot, but that's not on the top of my list. Is it on the top of yours, Mr. Producer? But you're going to want to hear this. Janice Underwood. You never heard of her before, did you? She's an invisible hand in the Biden administration, in my view, helping to destroy America. Janice Underwood, who serves as the government-wide chief diversity officer and is director of the Office of Personnel Management's Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion and Accessibility Office, will be vice president of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Talent Outreach and Development at Disney. At Disney. After nearly two years leading the federal government's approach to diversity, equity, and inclusion issues, that is, destroying America, the first government-wide chief diversity officer, Janice Underwood, will depart for the private sector, where she'll really cash in. That's just me. Joining the Walt Disney Company's Parks Division as vice president of diversity, Equity and Inclusion Talent Outreach and Development. That means all these parks you go to. We have to take out a second mortgage on your home if you have a family of three or four or five or more. While she's going to be in charge of uh, all the hiring there and all the practices there. So rather than backing off from DEI, Disney is quadrupling down. They're picking the federal governments, the Biden administration's top DEI official to oversee the Disney parks. I assume Nikki Haley will be celebrating this and encouraging Disney to go to South Carolina. That's why these so-called culture wars are so crucial. 
Underwood was appointed Chief Diversity Officer in May 2022, simultaneously served as the OPM Director in the agency's Office of Diversity, Equity, Inclusion, and Accessibility. President Biden created the position of government-wide Chief Diversity Officer as part of his 2021 executive order aimed at improving diversity. This guy Biden, he's white, he's straight, he's a Christian, and he's in, oh, diversity, diversity. Well, he wasn't always that way, was he? No, he was a white supremacist. He was a segregationist and a racist. Hey, come on, Mark, this was then and there. Well, you don't, you don't give George Washington a break. What the hell are you giving Joe Biden a break? In fact, you're elected a president of the United States, you, you clowns on the left. Disney announced that it had hired Underwood via a post on Lincoln. Lincoln rather. Prior to her role in the Biden administration, she was Virginia's first chief diversity officer, serving under Democratic Governor Ralph Northam. You remember him. If the abortion's botched and the baby is on that steel table, well, you can decide whether to let her live or not. And real, real big heart. But listen to this. I mean, it's serious what these corporations are just so unpatriotic, so disgusting. During her time in government, she oversaw the creation and dissemination of the first ever report analyzing the state of diversity initiatives across the federal government, as well as a strategic plan for how to advance government diversity initiatives. I have it. Just all of you people who don't fit into their groups and their stereotypes, just quit. Just leave on your own accord. Last year in the index second year, the government saw a two-point increase from its baseline. Uh, who cares? Now, who is this fool? The OPM director, Kiran Ahuja, had to praised her. I want to thank Dr. Underwood for her service as a dedicated champion of diversity, equity, inclusion, and accessibility in the nation. That simply means racism, segregation, and discrimination. Should be called racism R, segregation S, and discrimination D, RSD. It's RSD. This work is essential in our ability to recruit, hire, and retain the best talent from across the country. This is the Biden administration. This is the Biden administration. So I thought you'd want to know that she's going over to Dizzy where she'll make a fortune. And these parks have already been destroyed for, you know, it, it's very depressing, honestly. We used to love going to Disney, the whole family, and I know yours did too. There wasn't politics there. The closest they came to was the Hall of Presidents, which wasn't politics. They just had the president. And they've destroyed Disneyland and Disney World. They've destroyed Disney movies. Disney TV shows, they've destroyed them. Destroyed them. The whole atmosphere and environment is destroyed. Except for crackpot leftists who want to go there and do whatever propaganda, listen to whatever propaganda Disney has to put out. But it's just terrible. And none of these people, her... Iger, the rest, they didn't create Disney. It was created by other people, Walt Disney and others. But they just secrete themselves into these systems and destroy them. It's like Thomas Jefferson's home, for God's sakes. When you go there now, it's a whole propaganda thing on what a rotten, lousy slaveholder this guy was. They've done it to Madison's home. Same thing. The father of the Constitution. And they're doing it in our classrooms every damn day. Now is not time for a rhino. Now is not time for somebody who apologizes for our principles and our morals and our belief systems. Let the other party do that. Which, of course, they do. Very important piece also. All this reading that I do, it's very important, I think, so I can convey some of it to you. In the Federalist by Christopher Jacobs. And Christopher Jacobs was very, very hard on the Speaker of the House, Johnson, for this budget deal he cut. And then he comes back to write more. 
And he says, well, you know, Johnson, maybe I have a little different, more nuanced take, says Christopher Jacobs. I'm speaking for him. Of course, without his authority, but who cares? I've read both his pieces. And he headlines that in many ways, Johnson didn't bail out Democrats from a tough political predicament. He means with this deal as much as he did his own Republican members. Oh, what are you talking about? What do you mean? What he means is, many if not most, I quote, congressional Republicans would not vote for a change the date spending bill because they have about as much interest in cutting spending as do Democrats. For instance, here's a statement from Susan Collins, ranking Republican on the Senate Appropriation Committee, and I quote, while I continue to believe that additional defense funding is necessary, I hope the speaker... This agreement will help us avoid a year-long continuing resolution, implementation of the Fiscal Responsibility Act, i.e. the debt limit bill, CR penalty, the automatic spending cuts, or a government shutdown, which would be disastrous for our national defense, homeland security, biomedical research, and many other programs. So in other words, she does not want any cutting in any form in any procedure. And I love the way they throw defense out there. Defense isn't the spending problem. I love the way they throw national security and homeland security out there. That's not the problem in terms of funding. It's climate change and all the crap that they larded into it. Domestic spending is completely and utterly out of control. It's the funding of the IRS. It's all that. And Susan Collins doesn't mention any of it. Because she's the Nikki Haley of Maine. Nikki Haley is the Mitt Romney of Utah. In in other words, Susan Collins wants to spend more and more money than under the spending caps. And she doesn't just want to spend more money on defense and border security either. She wants to keep up the COVID spending binge across the board. Remember that? The one-time increase. Got to have a one-time increase. Spend a fortune to address COVID. They've never stopped using that in the baseline. She's not alone, he says. Many other congressional Republicans, particularly appropriators, have taken this position. Some of them have couched their support for Speaker Johnson along the lines of a deal's a deal, meaning that the Speaker cannot undo what he agreed to a week ago. But others have gone further and tried to justify Johnson cutting a deal that, for the reasons we just said, he didn't need to make a deal to begin with. David Joyce, Republican Ohio, liberal, a House appropriator, liberal. Doesn't care about the debt. None of these bums do. Well, some do. Most don't. Claim that shutting down the country never really gets any goals truly accomplished. Really? Really, Schmo? Well, Reagan did it eight times, and he got a lot of goals accomplished. Another appropriator, Mike Simpleton. I mean, Simpson of Idaho. See, we can't even get conservatives out of Idaho. Took a similar tax, saying he didn't know what Johnson would have done differently. He handled the cards he was dealt. Except that Johnson didn't handle his cards at all. He says he folded them. I don't really know what they want Johnson to do. Any more than they wanted Kevin McCarthy to do. Truthfully, you have two-thirds of the Republicans in the House who are spendaholics. And you've got a nothing majority. Nothing. So my view, and I don't know what Johnson's view is. You're going to have to shut down the government. It's been shut down over 20 times by Republicans and Democrats and no Washington insiders and no Washington ruling class media. We haven't lost elections as a result. Reagan won massive landslides. And even after the Cruz filibuster on Obamacare, remember how they destroyed or tried to what he was doing and his reputation, starting with the pages of the Wall Street Journal and McConnell and McCain and all the rest. Remember all that? We added seats to the Senate. We added seats to the Senate. These people are afraid of conservatism. They're afraid of undoing some of what they've created. And if you want Susan Collins, and you want these 
Mike Simpson types and David Joyce types and all the rest to lead the Republican Party, not only will we be a minority forever, like we were under pre-Newt Gingrich Houses of Representatives, like we were for decades in the Senate, before Reagan came along, before Gingrich came along, two conservatives, then support these people. Don't do anything. What is their proposal? What is Susan Collins' proposal? None. What is David Joyce's proposal? I want to read it to you. None. How about Mike Simpson? None. What are their proposals? The country's sinking, sinking in debt. People are suffering, and it's only going to get worse. They say they care about defense. They don't care about defense. They don't care about national security. You know why? Because interest rates, interest on the debt in the next 24 months, if not sooner, will be higher than what we're spending on defense. That's what Susan Collins has done. That's what these moderate Republicans are supporting. They're the ones doing it. We could spend more on defense if we weren't spending God knows what sums of money on all these domestic redistribution, left-wing climate change programs, all this crap. The Democrat Party's priorities, their programs. Why must we fund them all the time? I understand we have a tiny majority. I understand there's only so much the speaker can do. But I keep hearing about these horrible things that will happen if we shut down the government. Quote, unquote, it hasn't happened since 2015. And as a result, we've had an explosion of spending. I want the inside the Beltway media to explain to me. The inside the Beltway think tankers. The mouthpieces for McConnell, the mouthpieces like Susan Collins. Tell us, what exactly are you going to do to get spending under control, to get this debt under control, to reduce interest on the American people. What the hell are you going to do? They're not going to do a damn thing. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. Hey, you know, as I'm sitting here... There's news that pops, which is why we are the cleanup show for the rest of the media here. And here is the the Daily Mail with a breaking story. Listen to this, Mr. Producer. Hunter Biden, prosecutors say, cocaine was found on a gun pouch that he bought illegally. (laughs) That means it would have been on his gun. Illegally, while addicted to drugs in a scathing court filing. So Hunter Biden is the only gun owner who the media and the Democrats defend. He has a right to own a gun. Yeah. Come on now, Second Amendment. But I don't know how many situations we have where somebody has a gun mixed with cocaine. Poor baby, such a victim. So he gets a gun illegally, commits perjury. He's obviously still using cocaine. They tried to lie about this and suggest that he wasn't anymore. We now know that the fantastic paintings he did, uh, which looked like they were done with his feet, that uh, donors were involved in buying those painting 70 percent of them as best as they can tell so far with enormous amounts of money and that joe biden at least had some indirect knowledge if not direct knowledge that that was taking place this is a corrupt mob crime family they run around talking about democracy really this isn't a democracy what they're doing how they operate This is like the stupid, stupidest family in America. And look how they're working the system, playing the system, playing us for fools. Their damn propaganda, disgusting media, the Praetorian Guard protecting them. So, Mark, why is David Weiss all of a sudden doing these things? There's two reasons in my view. Number one, he still hasn't charged Hunter Biden with the one charge 
that ensnares Mr. Colluder, Mr. Conspirator, Joe Biden, FARA, the Foreign Registration Act. And I know I'm right because the backbenchers have now been regurgitating this, Mr. Producer, but it's true. It's true. Because they can get testimony from Joe Biden as a result of that because of Joe Biden's discussions with his son. Now, the second point is Mr. Weiss's reputation is in a complete free fall, in complete tatters. So he figures, let me do the tax thing. Let me do the gun thing. Let me throw the book at him. Daddy's going to pardon him anyway, one way or another. That's for sure. Uh, So I can at least try to get some reputation back. So those are the two main reasons. And as I said, he knows Biden will pardon his son. Be right back. Mark Levin, the thunder on the right. Call in now, 877-381-3811. This administration is riddled with such scandals. It's unbelievable. But yet they act like it's the cleanest one ever. We're saving democracy, for God's sake. Mr. Producer reminds me, remember the cocaine in the White House? They never found the culprit? Boy, that must have been tough, Mr. Producer. That was a real... Well, we sent in the Secret Service, the FBI, the best team we have. They can't figure out who it was. They just can't figure it out. Oh, okay. Prosecutors say Hunter went into a Wilmington, Delaware gun store on October 12, 2018. And bought a Colt Cobra, 380 SPL, an HKS speed loader used to rapidly reload bullets and ammunition. I thought Joe Biden wanted to outlaw that stuff. Hmm? Let's see if the Democrats push for gun control tomorrow. Hey, Hunter Biden's a perfect example. The system doesn't work. We need more gun control. We need tighter rules. Hunter Biden. Oops. Wait, that's not for now. That's for next month. When asked whether he was an unlawful user of or addicted to any depressant, stimulant, or narcotic drug and any other controlled substance, the defendant answered no. If he had answered yes, he would not have been able to buy the gun. The Colt Cobra cost $886.81. So Hunter handed over $900 in cash, prosecutors allege. I remember somebody that I, I knew. I went to an NRA convention where you can actually purchase guns and purchase them legally. But, you know, you got to wait like a half hour. They run it through the system. And he got kicked out of the system. Uh, because he'd been on probation or something like that. It's very embarrassing for him. 11 days later, his then-girlfriend, Hallie Biden, the widow of his late brother, Bo, found the weapon in his car with the windows down. First of all, this whole thing is sick. So Bo, who appears to have been the real patriot of the crowd, a veteran, had his head screwed on right, unlike the other Bidens. He passes away, tragically, from brain cancer. And his brother marries his ex sister his ex sister in law. Why does it even enter your mind? Guy's sick. But Joe is okay with that. Why? Because he's sick too. Let's be honest. Eleven days later, his girlfriend Haley Biden, widow of his late brother Bo, found the weapon in his car with the windows down. Not sure what the windows down has to do with anything. <clears throat> Alongside it with a speed loader. I have a speed loader. And the ammunition. She threw the gun in a trash can behind a grocery store. Uh, these Bidens. Can't question their intelligence, that's for sure. The police later obtained the gun case from the defendant and obtained the defendant's gun. The ammunition contained in the ammo box, the speed loader, and brown leather pouch from the Older man, the filing states, the president's son is also separately facing a nine count indictment for alleged tax crime. This guy's a model citizen. That's all right, daddy. Daddy just keeps doing his thing, keeps getting elected. Keeps moving ahead. 
Attorney Abby Law, who is humiliating himself and destroying his reputation with his comical antics. I wouldn't pay this guy $20 an hour to represent me. He was forcefully confronting prosecutors' arguments in both cases. Made the filing in federal court in Delaware where Hunter is accused of lying on a form when purchasing a Colt Cobra revolver in 2018 at a time when he's written he was abusing crack cocaine. So they look at his autobiography. Autobiography for this guy. But his autobiography, where he's talking about how he was all drugged up during this period. And so the prosecutor takes paragraphs out of his own autobiography and says, look, the guy confesses right here in his book that he was a drug addict at the time that he purchased the gun. And there's cocaine on the jacket, on the holder. You cited recent court rulings on gun ownership at Abbey Law, including a recent appeals court decision striking down prohibitions on drug users possessing firearms. So now we're going to have the drug user loophole, right, Mr. Producer? Come on, you Democrats. Come on, you can do this. We can't have a drug user loophole just for Joe B- uh, for Hunter Biden, the Hunter Biden drug user loophole when purchasing guns. Come on, come on, let's hear you, Democrats. Come on, Jake, Andrea, all you other clowns. No. His attorneys argued the charges were politically motivated and accused Weiss, the, the prosecutor, of having buckled under political pressure to bring more severe charges. That's it. Good one, Abby. The Republicans made him do it. That's right. The Republicans. They knew that Joe Biden might be president one day, so they set up Hunter. They set him up. They gave him money. They have sex with young girls who were trafficked. They set him up to buy a gun illegally. They probably put the cocaine on the damn thing. They set him up. Poor dumb bastard. He didn't know what was going to hit him. Maximum time in prison would be 20. He's not serving one day in prison. Unless it's just a pass through. Daddy's going to take care of Hunter. And by the time they're done, they're going to turn him into Mahatma Gandhi. They'll turn him into Dreyfus. He will have been one of the great victims in American history. By the time this is all done, Mr. Producer, take my word for this. According to the indictment, Hunter lied about his drug use when he purchased a gun in 2018. And it goes on. Let's see here. But if it wasn't for this judge in Wilmington, who will be forever monitored by the Democrats to make sure she never moves up. None of this would have happened. Oh, and they're still trashing the judge in Florida because she won't go along with the interfering in the election. I heard some liberal, even on Fox, go, yes, and that judge in Florida. Oh, yeah, yeah, she's so horrible. A Trump appointee. Oh, yeah, okay. That, yeah, that's right. She's playing it by the book. Playing it by the book. She's not going along, you know, like the other Democrats. She's not moving fast. I forget the woman's name, but she's pretty damn good. She's playing it by the book. Criminal trials don't take five months. Five months? With the president, Trump. Five months. But that had to be slowed down. It's incredible, isn't it, Mr. Reducer? And just so you folks know, well, I have time to deal with these things. The Arctic ice. Mark, you're moving. I got to move fast. This program should really be seven or eight hours long. I couldn't do it that long, but that's what it requires at this level of discussion. Arctic ice is at the highest level in the last 21 years. Oh. They got more polar bears bouncing around that they can shake a stick at. Oh. Then we have federal courts handing down decisions on home appliances and so forth and telling the Environmental Protection Agency, uh, hello, you don't have the authority to do this stuff. I mean, under your theory, Biden and EPA, 
EPA. You can regulate anything. You can you can eliminate anything. That's not your statutory authority. There are some limits. No, 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 there aren't. I mean, we've got to save the planet. Look at this, the FAA. Over at the New York Post. America's safety is at risk as the FAA's latest diversity push puts the woke mob at the controls. And this is the stuff Susan Collins and all these fraudulent Republicans keep funding. A massive, out-of-control, Leviathan central government. Susan Collins and these other frauds have no interest in constitutional government. They have no interest in limited government. And as was pointed out, it's true. The reason a speaker, a Republican speaker, a guy like Johnson, who's a solid guy, the reason they have to cut these deals is because of the rhinos in the Republican Party. They outnumber the conservatives. And by the way, the appropriation committees in the committee in the House is the worst of the worst. Utterly out of control, because think about it. It's like Ted Stevens when he was chairman of the Senate appropriations and Robert Byrd. They go back and forth depending on who controlled the Senate. They were the biggest spenders at that time in American history. Can you imagine being the chairman and deciding what comes up for a vote, what doesn't come up for a vote? Deciding who gets what? You imagine the power that goes with that? These are little fiefdoms, little dictators. And that's what we have on the House. On their appropriations committee, same damn thing going on. And this is why I was so furious, among other reasons. That when Kevin McCarthy actually was able to get the rhinos to agree to the most fiscally conservative budget bill and the most uh, border security centric part of that bill that we've ever seen that Matt Gates and Nancy Mace and the other eight boneheads different eight boneheads than before moved to have him removed and then he's removed and the whole deal collapses And all the parrots in my business, whether TV and radio, were thrilled. Absolutely thrilled. They gave you a thousand reasons why it was good. You don't hear from them today, do you? Because what's being proposed now is ten times worse. Ten times worse. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. This show seemed to roll pretty damn fast. Well, we've covered a lot tonight. And I just want to remind you, this election is about voting. This election is about who's on top and who's not. But it's about a lot more than that. Once the election's held, we don't need 12 hours of analysis. Before the election's held, we don't need 12 hours about who's on top, who's at the bottom, who needs to do what. It's interesting. But it reaches a point where it's not, in my view. Plus, there are things going on in this election, to this election, with this election, that need to be amplified. And that have as their purpose to interfere with or affect the outcome of this election. And in, to, in my view, it's a monumental oversight or mistake. Not to discuss them in the context of the election, whether it's these legal issues race issues, or immigration issues. Well, Mark, those are topics. No, no, no. They are being used. Not just that Americans are upset and concerned about it. They are being used to affect the outcome of this election. And I've made the point a few times to you folks. If Joe Biden is elected president, will you accept it? More to the point. If Donald Trump, the leading candidate right now, maybe forever, looks like it. If Donald Trump is elected president, will they accept it? They've already answered it, no. They're already putting together a secret team. 
to try and destroy his presidency and undermine it, usurp it. Lawyers, of course, slip and fall lawyers, the worst of the worst. To bring lawsuit after lawsuit in front of, I'm sure, cherry-picked form shop judges and courthouses. That's what they plan to do, among other diabolical things. And you know damn well the Democrats in the Congress will do everything they can, even if it means destroying the country. Because remember, for them, party first and power always. We salute our armed forces, police officers, firefighters, emergency personnel, our truckers, freedom fighters all over the world, and you, red-blooded American patriots. God bless each one of you and our brothers and sisters in Israel and Ukraine. See you tomorrow.